Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So I'm at the park with uh, Mavic Pro. Now I'm going to go through a full-on flight test. I got three batteries here in the um, package. In this uh, Flamware combo, this is the Flamware combo version where you get two extra batteries, the bag, and some other stuff. So if you miss the initial unboxing and setup, I'll have the link, the card pop up here, and I'll have also have the link in the description of the video so you can check that out. But today I'm at the park. There's really no wind, maybe a few miles per hour, just kind of rotating around here. We're going to put this thing through a thorough flight test, try to complete and test out mostly all the features. I do have three batteries, so this may be a long one, but I want to get a lot of the features in here in this flight test. So let's just see how this thing performs, um, and then we'll go through like a pros and cons at the end and see how it does. So what I'm going to do is just quickly set it up and just kind of see how long it takes to go from you know fully charged bag state to actual flying don't forget i will have the link to the uh, mavic pro and also the flamware combo in the description of the video so if you want to check that out go ahead and check out and click the link under the video so you can see what the pricing is the current pricing is and a little bit more in-depth specs so anyway without further ado let's go ahead and get started and set this thing up okay here we go so from bag state let's go ahead and set this thing up so just unzipping just pulling out the Mavic here, set that down, here's the controller, and I'm going to be using my G5 cell phone for this one. And first thing we want to do with the cell phone is you really want to make sure that your Wi-Fi is off since we're going to be connecting into the controller. Um, we don't really need to have Wi-Fi on and also make sure your Bluetooth is off just to really lessen the interference on the flight. So this is ready to go. Um, already got a battery in here so that's really all we need to do with the bag we'll set that on the side then we're just kind of unpacking this so just two front arms rotate those out two rear arms rotate them down and back and then just a matter of taking off this uh, gimbal guard here the dome and then the the gimbal brace just want to kind of turn it like this and pull it out set those guys down and this thing's pretty much ready to go. I just got to get the controller all configured. So I'll set this down and put the controller in. Put the phone in the controller. Just want to get the antennas up. And then make sure that all our wiring is good. And then really just plug in your phone first into the controller. Now this one's using the USB type C connector. So just going to make sure that this is seated really good. You can kind of look in from the side like I did in my unbox. Don't forget to check that out if you want to kind of see the setup. Anyway, that's it. So just make sure it's plugged in securely. Double check it's pushed in good. And then go ahead and give it a push. I do have a little slimline case on this guy. But uh, look at that. So that sits in there nice and tight. Make sure nothing's like you know bound up too bad make sure all your switches are good and we're really ready to go so first thing we want to do is turn on the controller so I'm pressing once and then I'm pushing and holding so click push and hold you're gonna see like it's connecting and then you're gonna hear the beep then all we need to do is put the Mavic down now this grass is a little bit long for this so I'm hoping it'll be okay. You know what, I'm just gonna put it so it just, it's barely sitting on the grass. It looks like the gimbal will be all right. Just keep that in mind. So, um, just kinda wanna spread the propellers. You don't have to do this, but I think it's good measure just to, um, so the motors aren't wobbling too hard when it's starting up. And you can see how they're almost hitting the grass. They're probably gonna hit the grass just a little bit on boot up, so. Preferably you want to have, you know, you can get some leg extensions or I was going to put it on my slipper, but it's okay. It should be okay. Or put it like on a, you know, flat board or box just to be safe. We'll see how this works in the grass here. All right, so Mavic on, pushing once and then pushing and holding so all the lights come up. And now we're just going to see, you can see the gimbal initializing. It looks like the grass isn't really touching it barely at all so it shouldn't influence it I felt a little vibration on the controller and immediately 
I've got my screen here and the Mavic is ready to go. So that's the time it takes to, to uh, initialize this thing to get it all set up. So that wasn't more than like a minute or two, so really quick setup. Okay guys, so I'm recording this screen. Um, it just said home point recorded because it got enough satellites it looks like. And if you want to see how many satellites you have, you can actually go ahead and see on the top of this phone screen here that we've got 17 right now. So we should be A-OK -okay for takeoff. I'm just going to let it sit for you know, a few more seconds. Um, got 100% battery on the craft. We can also see on our controller screen that we have 100% battery on the craft here. And then the controller, whoops. I just swiped away the controls. Okay, that's cool. Looks like if you don't want to see any controls, you can swipe in from the bottom and you can see all those uh, OSD stats go off if you wanted to. Anyway, cool. So good to go. Everything's saying ready to go. And uh, I'm not going to do the calibration here. I already did the calibration in my yard, and it's super easy. All you're going to need to do is go into the app and follow the instructions on the calibration. It's super simple. Um, I didn't have any problem, and do, did a test flight, and it flew perfectly in my yard. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be recording off the Mavic in 1080p, 30 frames per second. You can do 4K as well. So I may be switching that in the flight. I've got a few batteries, so as long as it takes to test out all the features, I'll be, probably be throwing up some 4K as well. So you kind of get the experience of the whole thing here. Here is our um, satellite map. Now, this is a little bit of a con to me. For some reason, this isn't refreshing to me. You can see that it's all blurry in the satellite map, and I'm not sure what's going on there. I tried turning off and on the Wi-Fi um, and all that stuff. We'll see if when it launches, if this kind of comes into play. I mean, this cell phone has data, and it should be coming in, um, so I'm not sure what the deal is with that, um, that Google Maps but we'll see if that gets better as we test it out. Okay, so we're ready to go. So we have some options on to launch here. We can either hold the both sticks down into the middle to arm and launch, or you can press this little guy here on the top left of the controller and slide the takeoff. Let's go ahead and try that this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide the takeoff. And there it goes. So the Mavic's up. And I should probably start recording, so here we go. So we're in camera mode. I'm going to switch to record mode. And I'm going to press this red button here. And that's recording in 1080p, um, 30 frames per second. We can see that we have, uh, I'm in standard mode. This is the sport mode here if we push that up. So I'm in standard mode. And we can kind of just see how well it's hovering. This is the height it got to when I did the auto launch. So that's about three feet off the ground. It's looking really stable. It's using its sensors to detect the ground. It's got a vision and a sonic sensor to look at the ground there to maintain its height. You can kind of, I can feel some wind coming in. This is like a five coming from this direction. So you can kind of see it flutter a little bit. And then you can also see, you know, how, how it's stabilizing the video on the screen. I'll also have that video up of the Mavic on the screen so you can see how it's doing during flight. But here we go. So we're at 95% power. Let me just get up to eye level here. You know what I wanna do is I'm gonna throw my keys down right where this thing took off. And that was right there. So we'll see when we do a return to home, we'll see how accurate it is when it lands, does its automatic landing. So I'm going to go out a little bit, I'm just pushing forward on the pitch stick, come up to eye level, and this thing, I mean, you can see how rock solid this guy is. You know, for the money, what you're getting is a, is a really high performance machine here, and I wouldn't have guessed any less. I mean, I've seen a couple reviews on this thing, and it just sticks right there in the air where you want it to. So I'm going to do my little walk around. And you'll probably be see, see me coming in the camera. Hello, guys. And you can see that the vision sensors are actually um, picking me up. You can see that the red little warning signs there. And I'm feeling the, the uh, controller is actually vibrating. So I can feel that. 
So it's doing really good. I mean, you know, a little bit of wobble from the wind. The wind's coming from my back about five now. But I'm not seeing any change in the video. And that's what this thing's great for is little compact, high quality video machine to take out and take some video. Semi-professional. Anyway, you can see that it hasn't moved at all. Maybe like an inch or two up and down because it's using those high-tech vision and sonic sensors to check out the ground and it's also GPS locked in the air here. And speaking of GPS, we've got 19 satellites now if you look at the top of the screen. So that's great. So let's go ahead and do like a quick little uh, camera pitch deal. And you can see on the right of the controller, on the roller, I can go ahead and adjust my exposure. So say it's a little cloudy right now, it's a little overcast, and I want to brighten that up a little bit. I'm just rolling to my right, and I'm getting a little bit brighter, you know? So you can see that on the screen while you do it. And this also has an overexposure setting. If you wanted to see those zebra lines, you could turn that on to see what in the picture is overexposed. I'm not going to turn that on for this flight because it kind of ruins the, um, the video of what you're guys seeing. It's not going to show up on the recorded video on the craft, but I'm not going to turn that on. So left roller, I'm pitching the camera down. Let's go all the way straight down. And it's looking good, just pointing right at the ground. For this one, keep in mind that this one you have to focus. So it looks like the ground might be kind of out of focus. I'm hitting my left trigger button here. And that should focus the center of the screen. So you see how the grass is more in focus now? Let's go ahead and pick that camera back up by rolling the left roller to the right. And then you're going to have to focus again. So if there was one little con um, so far on this one, it's no autofocus. So you need to make sure that whatever you're shooting, you got to kind of constantly, you can either click on the screen like this to focus in, you know what I mean? Or go ahead and click this left click like I just did. Oops, I just accidentally clicked return to home. So it's good that they have, the, I guess you have to hold this button to make it go to return to home. If you do a little quick press, it won't. So that's good. Anyway, a couple of things we can do here on the top right controller. Let's just try to see if the picture works while it's recording. So I just hit a picture and I'll have that up on the screen if it did record a photo. And of course here we can start to stop recording. Return to home button. Pause button if you're doing some kind of like uh, special flight functions, you can hit pause there. What's cool about this one, check this out. Let me get a little bit better view. Let's just go ahead and do a punch test in GPS mode. So from a hover to a full throttle up, let me get down a little bit. Full throttle up now. Okay, so vertical speed is 13 miles per hour about. I'm gonna stop it there. And let's go ahead and do kind of just a little panoramic. Now I've got three batteries, so this might be kind of long, but I wanted to just show you guys really what this thing can do. So I've got wind coming from my back, five miles per hour, and we'll be able to see, you know, what's going on. Now, again, left trigger to focus. That was kind of looked like it was out of focus. I want to focus on the houses on the horizon here. So I'm clicking that on the screen and I'm going to just keep rotating. And let's go ahead and just rotate the gimbal down, straight down. Again, got to click the left, tri left trigger or click the screen again to get the ground in perfect focus. So there we are. And then, you, of course, you can always do your exposure with the right roller. It looked a little washed out, so I'm going to turn the exposure down. So there we go. So that was just a quick little, um, you know, vertical speed test. Let's try to come down full throttle down. Let's see how this camera handles coming down full stick down in GPS, regular GPS mode. Stopping, full off. I don't see any camera shake, so that was good. Let's come down a little closer. Letting off now. You can see actually when it when it sends the ground, watch it slow down. So I'm gonna pull full stick down, it's gonna come down pretty fast. Right there, it slowed down. 
So it's letting you have a little more time to react. You know what I mean? If you have full stick down. So that's great. So pretty peppy. Let me go ahead and tilt the camera back forward. Let's go ahead and refocus to get our optimal focus. Okay, so let's try some speed runs with just regular GPS mode. There's the yaw rate, by the way. So this is just standard GPS mode yaw rate there. Here's full pitch forward. Boom. And let's see the speed it gets going in GPS mode. So I'm not going to touch the, the um, throttle. And horizontal speed, 15, 16, 17, 18, 22, 23... Could probably get going faster. Let's go ahead and go with the wind and see how fast thing, this thing gets going. 19, 23, 26. Whoop. Not available. Okay. <laughs> what happened there? Unfortunately, DJI Go has stopped. Son of a gun. Okay, well, there is a con there. DJI Go stopped, guys. Well, that sucks. So apparently with Android, they need to work on a crashing bug on their app. I'm going to reconnect. There we go. So that could ruin your day. If you're flying and you go out, make sure you let off the buttons. All else fails and you panic, go ahead and hit return to home. Let's try that right now. Say I lost connection. I was out. I couldn't re get, regain connection. Let's hit the return to home button see what happens. Holding it down until you see that X that popped up there. So now it's going into return to home. I have it set to rise up 50 meters. It's going to one, whoa, okay. 162 feet, actually. Now it's coming overhead. And now it's gonna come down. So descending exited visual avoidance system. So it looks like it turned off the front sensors for obstacle avoidance, which this thing also has if you have it in GPS mode. And now it's gonna come down. So all else fails, hold down that home button. You can also cancel out of home. Let's see what happens if we hit uh, the home button again. One time nothing happens, click and hold it. Canceled out. Or you can just press that red X that was up on the screen to cancel that out. Cool, so that's kind of what we can expect with the Android app. Sometimes it crashes. I've seen a couple other reviewers have theirs crash too. So something DJI or, you know, Google needs to work on. Anyway, let's see what else we can do with this thing. So we saw how fast it is in GPS. Um, what's cool about this, I wanted to show you something here. Let's go up and check this out. This is neat. So I'm going to go forward, say I want to get um, some footage of this school over here. So I'm going to fly over this school a little bit. And say maybe, I don't know, I could only get this close. This actually has a zoom feature. Let me go ahead and focus in again. See that building there? Actually, let's go ahead and focus in on this blue building. So go down to the blue building here. Focus in. This actually has a zoom feature. It's digital zoom, but check this out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the left little... See this little four-way thumbstick? I'm hitting left, and this thing is zooming in up to two times digital zoom. So look at that. That's pretty neat, huh? So I'm not sure. Maybe this thing has a partial um, gimbal, you know, gimbal and partial electronic stabilizing. Because if you can zoom in like that, that tells me that maybe... It's having an electronic stabilization help. And then we can go back to normal um, zoom. So that's neat. I didn't know this thing had that feature, but it does. If you need to get in a little closer and see something, you can. Of course, you know, you're going to get some pixelation. But it's a cool feature to have. You know, a little hidden Easter egg there. You can zoom in. And what this thing is set, you can uh, you can change all these buttons. You can change the triggers, and you can change this button. What it's set to do when you push up, you see how the gimbal just faced the ground. Push up again, it faces straight up, horizontal. So you can do that too. And then left and right is the um, zoom, as you saw. 
on that little stick. And let's see what happens if we pull down on it. Well, that gives us portrait. Okay, so for some reason, if you wanted to take a portrait video, you can. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can do it. Anyway, let's just see what's going on here. Let's come back over us. And I haven't even got into any of the advanced functions yet, but this has a lot of advanced functions. Maybe we'll save the advanced functions for the other battery pack if we can't get to it here. I want to take uh, my time on this review and make sure I go through everything. All right, wind's coming up. Got wind from my back, five to 10 now. It's getting a little stronger and I'll leave that up to you guys if you can see any any shake in the video I can't see anything from my FPV of the phone um, but that's cool again uh, tap on whatever you want to focus on get the clearest possible picture let's bring it down and go into like sport mode so full throttle down that's so cool how it slows down at maybe about 10 feet and really just kind of let you look at the reaction time on that stick these are settings you can adjust too. you can adjust the gains and stuff if you wanted to but um, just look how quick this reaction time is when I push the stick forward that's a pretty high response rate really fast press with that the yaw is a little not really delayed but I think it's a little soft because you know you want to have that kind of soft so you're not getting jittery video but you can see how I'm just full stick forward and back and look how good the camera is stabilizing that let's try to go forward and back real fast so you're gonna judge for yourself let's try to roll forward and back real fast left and right so it's doing a really good job stabilizing the video pretty impressed all right so let's go ahead and fly this thing in sport mode it looked like we were getting in this park I could only get up to about maybe 25 miles per hour so clicking this button up sport mode you know what before I do that back in the GPS I want to try to run into myself and see if it senses me so the sensors should be on let's see it sees me pushing full forward oh okay it's still pushing full forward and it stopped seeing my belly there with my x-wing shirt anyway um, cool so I can't run into myself Let's see if we go a little higher if it'll still detect us like right into my head okay don't try this at home but I'm trying it yeah so it knows I'm still there it's not going to go ahead and run into me, I don't think. It's getting kind of close, but that's like three, four feet. Great. So really impressed. Obstacle avoidance is working really well as far as humans go. And uh, let's go ahead and go into sport mode like I was saying. So clicking that button up. Keep in mind that it does turn off the front obstacle avoid and vision sensors. So look at that yaw. So we got a quicker yaw, higher pitch. And look at that stop angle. Wow. I'm going to fly really quick forward and from the side you'll be able to see the stop angle. So the app crashed again. Bummer. Okay, so now I got to go back into the DJI Go app. So um, let's go back into drones and DJI Go. Just to let you guys know, I am also going to be trying the Litchi app in a different review. The Litchi app has the virtual reality. I'm going to put it on my phone with the goggles. That will kind of suck if it crashed, but maybe that one will do a little better with Android and won't crash. And we'll try that. Okay, so let's try this again. Um, too bad that this app keeps crashing. A little bit disappointed in, you know, and this is the latest Android too, the Nougat. So. Maybe they can do some updates. Anyway, sport mode. Full pitch forward, and then I'm going to let off, and you'll see the stop angle right here. Letting off now. Woo! See how it, like, pulls back really hard? So it looked like it needed, you know, 10 feet to stop. Look how quick this thing is. You can fly super quick. And I'm not going to be touching the altitude. Let's see how low it gets. 
I did this. Woo! That's going quick, man. So you're gonna need some time to stop, so don't run into any walls with this. Whoa, it looks like it was it looked like it was going pretty low. It was getting down low. Nice. But you can be getting going fast. I think this is like 40 or 45 miles per hour in sport mode or something. Flying around. Woo! And I just want to see if it'll drop and hit the ground, perhaps. Full stick forward. So this thing's eating battery. Whoa! When you're in sport, man, that's eating battery quick. We're at 29%. So that was the warning at 30. Um, but that's fast. Fly around and have some fun if you wanted to. Just keep in mind that you are going to eat a lot of battery power flying around this fast. Let's see how the camera is when we just really tweak it lock to lock on the stick in sport mode. I'm going to do forward back rock. Forward back, forward, full stick, left, right, hard left, hard right. Judge for yourself how that camera looks. Looks like it's stabilizing it very well for how hard I'm hitting those sticks. So you're gonna hear that beeping if you do set your warnings. I have it at 30 and then 10% it'll go and do a landing. And uh, of course on the top I have the smart return to home so it's giving us that little meter you see up there on the left below the battery. It gives us those, that color bar that shows us, you know, the green bar is gonna deplete until that it hits that home icon there, the H, the yellow H, uh, the black H with the yellow background. And that'll tell us that we need to, it needs to return to home. It'll give us some options. So you'll see that up on the screen. Turning the sport mode off. Still performing very well. I'm still recording. Uh, I don't know how the focus is going to have been on those flights. And look at the difference. So this is full stick forward on GPS mode. And look how docile this is. Whoa, that was cool. So it sensed me, and did you see that? It just did a back pedal. Let's try that again, that was awesome. So I wasn't even trying to do that. I was just trying to fly close to myself. Full stick forward, let's see if it stops. I'll make sure I duck out of the way. Woo, oh, <laughs> still full stick forward, and this thing is great at detecting obstacles, so. You can count on this one for at least large obstacles. Probably don't want to be doing any thin tree branches or fences or anything. So this will be, with this first battery, this will just be like a, a flight test, a normal flight. You know what I mean? And then I'll pop in the other battery and we'll go through the advanced functions. So again, I'm sorry this is going to be a long video, but for those of you that really want to know what this thing can do, I'm sure you'll stay tuned. For the length so I'm just cruising until this battery is depleted um, while it's being depleted what else can we do let's go ahead and try uh, try get it up here try to take some photos full stick up vertical speed 13 about and let me try to take some photos. I'm right clicking the photo button. You know what? There's no indication that it's taking photos. Okay, there's a pop up on the screen. Aircraft will return to home after, and then it gives you the certain amount of seconds counting down, and it automatically goes into home. So if you have the smart return to home, it'll do that. When it knows it only has enough battery power to get home. It doesn't take into account the wind, so you have to be careful if you're going against the wind and it's trying to come home into the wind, you have to be very careful. I'm going to cancel this. I just pressed that red button on the screen because I want it to try to return to home on those keys where it took off. So I'm going to fly out here a ways. Okay. And then... Um, I'm going to initiate a return to home. So I'm holding in return to home on the controller until we get that indication on the screen. And I want to see if it lands. Now, I haven't landed it since I took off, so it should still remember that point as the return to home point. 
And what's interesting right here is it got to, it looked like about 60 feet. Then it faces its home position. Then it goes up to your preset return to home height. So, you know, it's good a good thing to know if you guys wanted to know that. Now it's coming back. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt the camera all the way down. And let's see how accurate it is in landing on those keys. That's right where I took off. I do have the um, camera face down. Just focusing on our area. I don't know how this is gonna perform when it's getting closer to an object. You have to keep hitting the focus. That would kind of suck. Let's tilt the camera back up. Look straight ahead and let's see where it lands, guys. Not touching the controller. You saw how it was coming on fast. Now it's getting really slow, even slower. Wow. That thing's right where it took off from. Maybe a couple inches away. And it just shuts off its propellers. Very impressed. That was amazing. So you can see, now this one, the reason it got so close is because it's using its, you know, um, ground sensing camera also. I think it takes some kind of like 3D image of its surroundings when it takes off. So if it's, you've got a few points on the ground, it will check it out. And what's cool about this too is you can turn on a setting that detects if there's obstacles that's unsafe to land. So it'll tell you unsafe to land, you know, take over manually and I have that setting on and it's just right in the settings here I'm not gonna go into it but it's there and that's really impressive to me so if you're out you know you launch from somewhere or I don't know if you can do a hand launch on, on this thing but if you launch and you're out there you come back like say you're on the beach on some rocks and you want to land it'll detect if rocks are in the way if it's gonna hit the propellers hopefully that's what it's it is supposed to do and it will tell you um, unsafe to land and it will tell you to choose a different spot and come down to land and it even does that if you pull down to land if you have that setting on check if it's safe before landing setting in the in the settings here and it will tell you that even if you're forcing it to come down so I really like that feature that's a great feature that will It'll make sure it doesn't damage your camera. It'll make sure it doesn't damage your propellers and stuff. So I would recommend turning that on. I have that on right now. I tried to land at my house on the edge of my trampoline and it told me unsafe to land. Please take, please take manual control and pick another spot to land. So really impressed with that. But anyway, guys, let me pop another battery in this thing. So far, super impressed. I'm going to stop the video and let's go ahead and put in another battery test out these advanced functions. I'm going to hit that right here on the screen. You see all this stuff here? Gesture control, active track, tap fly, tripod, terrain follow, point of interest, follow me, waypoints, home lock, course lock. So we'll test out as much of those as we can after we pop in this fresh battery. Okay, brand new battery. I'm um, just checking the heat of this thing. It does get a little warm on the bottom here. Not hot, we got a breeze, I've been flying around. So this thing isn't that hot on the bottom. So it's doing its job, the air vents. Definitely don't fly with the globe on if you can help it. Cause it does have a fan in here that pulls the air through all the components. So anyway, it's only been about a minute since I took out that other battery. Got a fresh battery here. Let's go ahead and pop this thing in. For this flight, check this out. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the camera settings. You see this little icon down here? And I'm going to go into the video, whoops, that went into the camera. I want to go into the video settings. So I'm pressing that little video on top. And I want to go ahead and crank this up to 4K. As high as it can do. 4K 20, 4 frames per second, or we can do 4K. Let's do, let's do 4K 30. It's a little less um, width of resolution. Is it? Can we do 4K 30? No, we only true 4K, we only can do 24. Let's just do that. Let's just see how good it looks. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start recording. So recording has started on the 4K and let's go ahead and launch. So again, as I was saying, uh, both sticks into the bottom. 
see how it arms there. And then we're just pushing up if you want to launch this way. Okay. It recorded its home point. So we should land really close to that when we come back. Have high confidence in its capabilities to do that. All right, so you can see how we're out of focus on the video. I'm gonna click this left trigger or touch the screen to focus. There we go, focus on that little house thing there. Looks like maybe it takes a little longer to focus in 4K. That's kind of what you can expect. All right, so let's try some of these advanced functions, guys. So clicking on this little quad icon on the left of the screen, you can see how it's blue highlighted in normal. Let's try, um, let's just try gesture. I don't know how this is gonna work, but let's try it. So move to be tracked. Um, gesture to confirm. Okay, so I'm in the front of the screen. So if I raise my hands up, it should track me and then gesture to take a photo. So let's try it. So I moved into the front of the camera. I'm going to go ahead and raise my hands up. Okay, did it work? Yes. Awesome. Active aircraft too low. So you got to come up. Let's see how high we got to get. Okay, cool. So I went ahead and rose my hands up. It looks like you have to press OK. So do I have to raise my arms up or can I not have the controller? Let's try to raise our arms up again. Oh, so raising your arms up gave it an OK signal. So look at this. So active track is working. Actively tracking myself. That's awesome. Um, only thing is, is it focusing? Let me go ahead and try to center, click to focus on myself. I don't know. I'm hoping it's focused. I guess we'll see in the video. Okay, so it's tracking me. So I didn't need to do that with the controller. So I'm gonna set the controller down here. Right there. Okay. It's kind of twitching a little bit. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it's tracking me. The controller's over there. Uh, let's try to take a photo. I don't know if it's gonna take a photo. So let me go ahead and um, come back over here and just make sure it takes a photo. So say there's a photo like that. Let's say it took a photo. I guess we'll see if it did. I don't know. Let's try it again. Is that a photo? Let's try to stop recording. Well, let me try one more time. Photo. Let's see if it takes... I'm gonna stop recording real quick. And I'm just gonna do the photo gesture. So, photo gesture. Oh, okay. See the red lights on the front? Is that what it's doing? Sorry, this is, I'm new to this. Let's see if it'll take that photo. Ah, yeah, see those red lights, okay. That's awesome. So I can walk around, I don't have to have the controller in my hand. And you see the red lights on the front? Watch this when I do the photo gesture. Okay, let me go run forward and see if it backs up. Yeah, so I have it set to back up in the setting, so it will back up. Stop, come back. I want it to take a photo right here, so I'm gonna take my hands and do one of these. Check this out, see the lights blinking on the front? So it hopefully it took a photo. It probably blinks and tells you, you know, I'm gonna take a photo and then when it stops blinking, it probably takes the photo. Let's try that one more time. Gesture, lights blinking, takes the photo. Gesture, lights blinking, takes the photo, okay? So that's pretty awesome. I'm really impressed with that. We'll see how the photos come out. I'll be putting those up on the screen. Um, so you really don't have to be um, having the controller with you. Let's go ahead and press record again on the on the video. Okay. Let's see what happens when we do this. So you see how the front red LEDs are off now. Well, this would be a good test. Will it take a photo of me while it's recording video? 
Doesn't look like it. Okay. So apparently, as far as I know, you can't start and stop the video um, when you don't have the controller. So I'm going to try that one more time. No, I have no indication on the front lights there that it's going to be taking a photo. So something we can expect. Good little test there. Let's see what else we can do. Okay. So it looks like it's tracking really good. Um, looks like the track went off for a second. Now it picked back up on me. See that there? So getting a little bit of garble on the video for some reason. See that? Anyway, um, all right. So you see this little button here, this active track icon. Let me just go ahead and click on that. Oh, okay. So that gives you a little menu that pops up. If the active track, if this GPS signal is good, it's gonna be assisting the track. So you can have that off or on if you want. So it's not just utilizing um, the camera if you have this on, it's actually using the GPS of your phone. So if you think you're gonna put your phone down, uh, the controller down, turn that off and you'll probably get a better, oh, crash again. Okay, bummer. But I can see on the controller, it's still recording and stuff on the controller there. So um, kind of disappointing on those crashes, man. I wish that wasn't the case. I don't think you'd have that much crashing. I, I've heard that it's not that bad on an Apple device. So it's like the devs need to kind of work on Android. Anyway, um, I'm pressing left and right and it's not able to yaw because it's in active track mode. So I'm gonna press stop, that little stop button there. And now I can fly normally. See that there? So let's try a couple of other functions. The sun and the wind are kind of coming out a little stronger now. I'm just, I'm doing that. I'm just controlling it kind of erratically. Anyways, um, okay. So more advanced features guys. Let's see what we can do. Clicking on the quad icon, we did the gesture. It works pretty cool, but you can't, when you're recording video, you can't take pictures apparently, unless I'm wrong, I'll, I'll explain that on the screen in some writing or pictures if I was wrong with that. We did active track, it tracks pretty good. Um, track mode, trace mode, active will, career craft will follow, and it will turn and circle the target. Okay, cool, so we can do start, oops. I don't want to start the tutorial because I know how to do it. Exit tutorial. Okay. So active track was kind of, we kind of did that already in the gesture mode. So that's already all kind of done. Um, you know, so we don't really have to go that into that again. Let's just see what happens. Let me just click on myself here. Okay, so here's the other options, trace, profile. Let's try profile. We, we're kind of doing trace with the with the gestures. So I'm gonna do trace and I'm clicking. Okay. I wanna do profile actually. Is it tracking yet? Oh, it's already tracking me. Okay, because it's probably using the GPS to track the phone, kind of. So with the profile, see that? It's not coming closer to me. So it's just going to kind of pivot in one. It's going to stay stationary, apparently. Let's see what Spotlight does. I'm going ahead and focusing again. Let's go ahead and click on Spotlight. Always head to the target and direction of flight course will be locked. All right, so apparently flake course is locked at a certain degree. So you see if I move out of the camera, it won't yaw. Let's see if it will follow though. Is it following? Do I have to press okay? What's up? Just the heading, okay. Just the heading of your aircraft and apply course lock. The course forward direction will be fixed until you reset or exit the course lock mode. Okay. All right. Great, hide. Okay, so I want this course lock. Actually, you know what, let's go sideways more. 
to this cork lock right here. Pressing the course lock button on the bottom of the screen. Does that work? Clicking and holding, what do I have to do? I don't know, let's just try it. Let's walk. No, so apparently I don't know how to use that mode. So I'm not gonna use that right now. <laughs> Sorry guys, I just am not getting this right now. I'm sure there's some other tutorials on how to to use that. Anyway, hide that. Let's just go ahead and press it and exit out of this mode. Exit this mode. We'll hover, yes, confirm. Okay, anyway, my bad, couldn't really figure out the course lock. Uh, tap fly is the normal tap fly where, you know, you're basically setting your mile per hour here on the slider. So you see the slider here? I'm gonna have it go five, around five-ish. And then I'm gonna press start. Oop, they don't wanna start the tutorial though. I'll show the tutorial later. Okay, so now we're in um, tap to fly. Let's see if we tap over here, what happens? Oh, the exit, uh, okay, I guess that exited tap to fly. Okay, let's try this again. So, five miles per hour about clicking over here. Toot. Go. It'll fly over there. Let's see if it stops. When I did the Phantom 4, it didn't stop at that location. It just keeps going. So you kind of have to stop it yourself. You know what I mean? So I don't really see anybody really using this, that function. I can yaw and it's still going in the same course there. And then uh, let me see if I adjust the speed. Let's ramp it up to 10. Yeah, starts getting going faster. So I'm just gonna keep, this could be kind of dangerous because it keeps going in that direction. I'm going to stop. I press stop on the left there. I don't think I'll ever use that mode, but it's there regardless. Anyway, a few more modes before the battery runs out. We're at 52% battery. This is a long one, guys, but I just want to get all these try all these things out going back into the advanced functions let's try tripod tripod supposed to be super um, stable and it's supposed to go very super slow so tripod I got me here in the picture is it already tracking me I don't know no not tra tracking me so will it even track let me try to click and hold no. So it's not going to track me, but when I push full forward, look how slow it's going. It's going like, oh my gosh. Okay, it's going two miles per hour, 2.5 about. So if you're trying to get some amazing shots, let me go ahead and rotate the camera back up. If you're trying to get some amazingly stable shot, there is my yaw and my full pitch forward maximum max is out at like two miles per hour forward and here's the yaw see that so very slow and stable footage if that's what you're going for you know say you want to get some super slow good quality 4k footage or something okay so that's tripod mode let's see what the vertical speed is in tripod mode substantially slower that's full pit uh, full throttle up full throttle down very slow it's only two mile three miles per hour vertical speed all right cool so that's kind of what we can expect on that um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop aircraft will hover yes I know hit hitting this icon again uh, terrain follow I don't really have I guess we could try I could try to go up this hill. Let's try that. Let's go over here. We still got some power. And I'm just gonna walk up this hill. And let's go ahead and see if this thing will do a terrain follow. Uh, what that means is it should be going ahead and uh, detecting the terrain and adjusting, you know, its height. 
So I'm gonna make sure I can uh, get up to a regular height. I'm hitting terrain follow. Aircraft will automatically adjust its height based on the terrain ups and downs when land track is enabled. I do have land track enabled in the settings. Will be automatically disabled when aircraft is flying high. Okay, so start. All right, so here we go. Hide. And let's focus on ourselves. And let's just see if this works. Um, okay, is it going to follow me? How do we get it to follow? Looking and holding, holding and dragging. Oh boy. Click on that again. Okay, I just want it to, um, to follow me. <laughs> Is it already locked on? Let's see. Let's see if we walk this way. Okay, so it's not following me. I don't know what's up. Apparently I need some more instructions on this one. Anyway, sorry to waste your time. It's kind of funny. I don't know how to get it to start following. Terrain tracking. Let's just try this. Back in here. Maybe you just have to turn that on and then do uh, active track. Let's try that, active track. Okay. Don't need a tutorial. Get the ter terrain follow turned off, so. I don't know, man. A little confusing to me when you put terrain follow on. There we go, so let's press OK. And it should be should be tracking now. So it's gonna follow. Let's see what happens when we get up here um, on this hill. I want to see if it's gonna run into the hill or what. Let me get a little closer. I'm full pitch forward, and it's just trying to. Okay, see how it went up on its own. That's cool. Let's see. Let's go this way. Height is five feet. Yeah, it's going up. That's awesome. See how I'm coming up this hill here? And it's maintaining its uh, its height from the actual surface. Let's see if we go downhill, what happens? So it's saying 8.5 feet right now. Let's see if it can track me and come down this hill. I know this is gonna be kind of looking awkward for people around the park, but oh well. Good test. Yeah, look at that. So it's coming down the hill. Let's see what it does over this little hump. This is like a one foot hump. Let's see if it detects that little hump. Not really. <laughs> I guess that's not substantial enough. So that was awesome guys, man. That, so the ter terrain follow works. I guess it's already on in the settings. That's why it wasn't working for me when I was trying to do any kind of tracking with the terrain follow. So this thing's still following me. Uh, it's beeping low, low level because battery's hitting 30%. We're back at home base here. And that was pretty cool. Um, so you see when it's in like active track, I can push forward or back, uh, but I can't yaw. Let me see if I can do this. If I roll, so it's kind of keeping me. So you could do this if you wanted to, do like an orbit manually. See how it's like just orbiting me and all I'm doing is holding uh, the right roll there. So it's just gonna keep rolling like this. If I go back, it's trying to keep me in the frame. Oh, cannot track subject because the app crashed. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. If you have Android, you may have these app crashing problems, which is irritating. So that's not good. Hope they fix that. So I had to just start up the DJ app again. Lucky thing, this thing is trustable with 
it's um, GPS lock, so no problem there. And I remembered it's an active track, so if I clicked on myself again, it looks like it would uh, continue to track me. You know what I mean? DJ Go keeps stopping. Okay, I'm gonna have to send feedback eventually on this because that was stupid. All right, guys. So um, this is a little bit disheartening on this crashing problem. Well, I'm just gonna keep continuing on. We're at 19% drone power. I got 57% controller power. I'm gonna stop the active track stuff. Let's see what else we have left on the menu here. We did tripod, we did terrain follow. Point of interest, so we have a whole nother screen here. Point of interest, follow me, which we kind of already did. Waypoints, home lock, course lock. So we still got some stuff to do and I'm not sure if it's gonna let me do all of this while it has, um, there's our return to home again, while it has low battery. So kind of hard to go through everything, even in two battery packs. Um, let's go ahead and do a return to home, pack in the third battery pack. Let's try to tackle the rest of these features and then we'll wrap it up with the pros and cons. So we're gonna fly out here quick. And go ahead and go into return to home. Pressing in the return to home. Okay. So it's going to go up and see if I tap on the screen, get some focus here. And you'll be seeing how the focus was while I was flying around, you know, how the really, it was really focusing while it was flying without me tapping to focus because this one doesn't apparently do really do auto focusing. So we're back up there. It's heading on back. I'm just manually kind of tilting the camera down as it flies over. And let's see how f how close this thing gets uh, to our keys. If you can remember it, it was for facing this way and the keys were right on the side edge of it. So let's see how, if it kind of remembers how it's using its GPS and also its, um, you know, 3D camera, whatever it uses, its ground sensing camera to, uh, to land as accurately as possible. Looks to me like it's kind of off here. I'm gonna stop this. You see how if it... Oh, it's just gonna do a manual landing because you know why it's below 10%. So I waited too long. So I'll have to take over manually here and then land it where I want. See that? Aircraft has landed to 2.0. Continue to land. Who knows what that means? Maybe the doesn't know its altitude or what. Okay, so it's just letting me position it, and then I can pull down. Can I? Nope. See how it's just holding it there until I went ahead and held it down kind of hard. Anyways, there we go. So. Regardless, that's what it did. It seemed like, you know, when it drops below 10%, it's gonna do kind of a force slow landing. And then when it gets to, let me turn off this video. When it gets to a certain height, like eye level here, about six feet, that's when it indicated, you know, it landed to six feet or whatever, 6.6 .6 feet. You wanna continue to land. So that's when you take over and then go ahead and land. It seemed to like just totally eliminate its, um, its accuracy and return to home when that happens is just going to get you in the general area and then you kind of have to take over is what it seemed like to me anyway guys long video one more battery let's finish up these um, functions and then do a pros and cons okay taking out the spent battery and I'm not sure if this is advisable to be putting in th you know one battery one after the other other like this but at least, at least it'll tell you guys um, if it'll blow up or not or fail or fall or whatever I'm willing to take the test the risk again I have it right next to those keys so we'll see how it does 
Inconsistent firmware found. Aircraft firmware and firmware of peripheral devices do not match. Great. That had to happen right then and there, huh? Okay, so apparently it's doing a little update. So I'm going to go ahead and let it do this update. And I'll check back in in just a sec. Okay guys, so continuing on with this last and final and third battery to finish up this stuff. It took only about two minutes to do, run that update. I'm not sure what it was, but um, I just went ahead and let it do it. Still have 99% battery power on the quad, 50% on the controller. So that's kind of what you can expect. Two full batteries and I'm 50% down. Already had a fully charged Android phone, but look at this. It's trying to charge my phone, plus I'm at f only 57% 57% power on the Android phone, so um, it won't charge your Android phone fast enough to keep it fully 100%. So I'm losing battery on my phone and on the Mavic. So that's kind of what you can expect from two batteries spent with this kind of phone. This is the um, G5. Anyway, hitting camera, getting back in to the camera on the drone here, exiting out of that first flight screen. And here we go. Okay, cool. So we've already got 18 satellites, so we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and do the automatic launch again. So hitting that, sliding to the right. Let's go ahead and let it launch. Hit and record. And there we go. So it's going to hover at, it's like 3.5 feet. That's where it likes to be at. First launches. Okay, so if you remember, we were... Um, Going ahead and trying to finish up. See how I'm a little bit blurry there? Here's what you can expect with this one. You have to go ahead and either tap the subject for it to focus. See how it's focusing, 4K takes longer, or click in the left trigger if you have that set. There we go, so now we're focused. So a little bit irritating, but that's what you can expect with this one. All right, so look at my map. So I'm still, um, still have a crappy blurry map. I don't know why that's not loading my maps. This phone has data again, but I, I don't have it. So I don't know what that's all about. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get to the waypoint flight in this one. Anyway, uh, hitting the quadcopter again, swiping to the right, and here's the final screen. So let's do a point of interest. Hitting point of interest and fly the aircraft to above the point of interest and then set the position as POI. So say I wanted to um, fly it above this bag. <clears throat> okay, so let's just do all of us here, the bag and me and everybody in here. So what you need to do is you kind of manually need to fly above your object. So I'm gonna tilt the camera down, fly directly over it, okay? So we're kind of directly above the bag. I'm going to go up a little bit so everybody's in view here. And apply the point of interest. So I'm hitting apply on the bottom screen there. Fly to the appropriate um, position away from it. And I have to be, you know, a certain amount of uh, height. So it looks like I'm fine with the height. So I'm going to pull back now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what I need to do is actually pull back and then I'm, it looks like you need to manually kind of pick your camera up until you're, you see how it turned blue there, the radius? We'll try just that, 33 feet. I wanna center myself or the object in the video here. So that's right there. Let me go ahead and tap the focus real quick on us. So we should be good. We see blue radius and blue altitude footages. And let's go ahead and start. Okay, how to control. Here's how we do it. Left stick, it's turning. Increase radius up and down. Uh, right stick, throttle up, throttle down, clockwise, counterclockwise. So we'll just have to be testing that out. So let's try it. Okay, so it started automatically. It's automatically doing its thing. There we go. So if we wanted to on the screen, it looks like we could slide this slider up. Okay, cool. So I just slid that up to five. Let's see if we can max out. 13.3 miles per hour. So kind of cool. 
It's going to max out at 13.3, and look at that. So it's looks like it's doing a good job at keeping us centered there. Say we want to pause it. What happens if we hit pause here on the controller? Whoa, kind of jerked and paused. What happens if we hit pause again? It resumed. Well, that's cool. All right, so it's doing a pretty good job. So that's the point of interest if you want. And what does this mean? Toward POI, okay, if we hit this little thing on the bottom right. I just clicked it. I don't know what that's doing. Thought it would be coming closer maybe. But I keep clicking it. Thought maybe it's adjusting its distance to us a little closer. Yeah, it looks like it's coming a little closer maybe. Anyway, that's what we can expect. So it works very well. I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Um, you can press pause on the screen too if you wanted to. I hit pause on the screen and it went a little slower and stopped. You can see how jerky it was when I hit pause on the controller. So exit this mode. Boom. Confirm. It's just going to hover there. Okay. A couple other modes. What can we do? Alright, so we already kind of did the follow me, um, waypoints, we already did the follow me, home lock, that's just where it's going to like rotate around your home, pulling pitch stick down will move the aircraft towards the home point. Oh, okay, this is kind of like headless mode, so what should happen is if I rotate the left stick, let me go down a little bit, yeah. So this is like headless. And it looks like it's really slow, too. Anyway, rotating left yaw, pulling back on the stick. You see how it's just coming back home, no matter what I do? That's going to get somebody dizzy. All right, so let's focus again. So that's like headless. You go slow or fast if you're learning and you lose your orientation, you can do that. See, so I'm pressing forward and I'm rotating. It's always going to go away from home. Pressing back on the right stick and it's going to always come towards home. Okay, so that's home lock. Let's ex exit this mode, confirm. Go back into our advanced settings. And I guess we could do a quick little waypoints. Um, let me see what the course lock is. Just the heading of your aircraft and apply course lock. Forward direction by fix until you reset it or exit course lock. Okay, let's try. Apply. So we're course locked. Current forward direction will be fixed until you reset or exit course lock. It's like the same. Oh, okay. That's like um, headless, but not locked to home is what that is. So you see how I was facing that direction? And now back is always going to be that way, even if I'm turned. So that's course lock. It's just locking its heading in, and you can spin it however you want. Okay, easy peasy. So it looks like in this one, I'm not going to get into the waypoints because I don't have my uh, Google Maps on the bottom for some reason. And it's kind of starting to rain, it's starting to sprinkle. So what I'll do is I'm just going to get up, take a few photos, and then we're going to call it with this one. So let me go up here and kind of get focused in. Let's take some photos of the West Maui Mountains if we can. A little bit overcast, so we can't really see much. Let's go ahead and adjust the, um, you know, the uh, exposure a little bit. Focus in. And I'm going to stop recording. This was 4K I was recording in. And let's go ahead and take some photos. So I'm clicking this button to go to photos and taking a snapshot, boom. So there was a photo. We can also click this button. So let's see what happens when we click this button. So clicking that button for photos, that seemed to work. Let's go ahead and take a picture over here. Photo, I'll have these popping up on the screen so you can kind of see the quality of them. Here's another photo here. Let me go ahead and uh, adjust the exposure a little bit. 
It's getting kind of overcast, so I'm not sure how much you guys are going to be able to see. But at least there'll be something. There's a good picture of the park. Let's scroll down a little bit. Whoa. Focus in on the park. And then go ahead and take this picture here. So, taking a photo there. So you could just fly around taking photos if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and fly forward. Okay, so we're directly overhead. Let's try a overhead photo here. So let's just focus and then take a photo. Okay, so I've had those photos kind of popping up on the screen so you could see those. Sorry about the overcast and it's starting to drizzle. So anyway, let's go ahead and bring it in. Full throttle down right now. You can see how if I'm holding full throttle down, it stops right there. That was cool. So it, I was like full throttle down and it stopped like right there. If I kept holding it, it would go ahead and land. But I don't want to do that right now. I want to go ahead and get out and let's do one final return to home. Let's get way over here. Let's get way out here a ways. Okay, stop there. Let's go into return to home and let's see how close it lands to where we just took off. So holding the return to home. Not saying going home. I know you've seen this before, but I just want to see how close it gets to this point. Okay, so it's going to go up. I'm not touching any buttons. Uh, I just want to pitch the camera. So, well, you know, you're returning home, you can pitch the camera. Let's see if we can yaw it while returning home. Yeah. Well, nope, we can't. Can't do a yaw while we're returning home. The gimbal just moves a little bit. Let's point it down. See where we're going to land. Descending, exited, visual avoidance system. So it, it indicates to you that it, I guess, turned off the uh, forward facing avoidance cameras. Let's see where this thing lands before the rain comes in. And we can kind of do a final pros and cons on this thing. Looks like it's a little off this time. Let's see if it says anything. So right now it's kind of detecting the ground and it would have told me um, it would have told me if the ground didn't look good so it saw that the ground was clear and it went ahead and landed so pretty awesome you can see how it's not as accurate as it was the first time so it did lose some accuracy there on its landing so this is yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate that's one that's about three feet in that direction not too bad that feature is awesome that it does let you know if it can't land is you know you can just take over manually if you wanted to but it did a pretty good job let's go run through uh, pros and cons real fast on this thing um, before the rain really kicks in so what can I say about this an awesome drone uh, I'll have to do another video for the waypoint functions guys sorry about that I couldn't squeeze anything into this video this video is probably gonna be like over an hour but if you're looking into buying this, I think that's a pretty good test. I'll also do another video of the range as well as that waypoint video and then some coastline videos. So it's starting to rain, so I want to kind of get out of the rain, but uh, quick little pros and cons. Um, I'll also have the flight time up on the screen. I'll pop up the flight time right now after I do like a fully extent extensive test on it. Um, the gimbal is very good. It seems very stable. Look at that. Video is super stable, even when the thing shakes a little bit. I don't know how it's doing that. I have a feeling this has a slight electronic image stabilization as well for some reason on this one. Um, maybe that's why it's not quite as good as the Phantom 4 camera. 
but as far as um, the return to home was pretty good you can see that last one was a little three three feet off not sure what that was all about it boots up compact really easy to deploy in a minute or two um, really simple to fly you could see all those functions major con for me was that uh, manual focusing you always got to do so we'll have seen the video up on the screen and you can kind of see what was up with the manual focusing collision avoidance in the front super awesome you can see me just coming straight towards my face and it did would not let me go any closer if you're in sport mode this thing flies fast it's going to eat a lot of battery power in sport mode but it flies fast even going that fast it seemed like it would not hit the ground i mean it dropped a little bit of elevation but it still did pretty good so definitely you know i'd recommend this if you've got the money to spend on this thing it's a pretty awesome machine i'll have had the uh, 4k up the 1080 30 and the 4k 24 frames per second footage so you could see that also the photos i took will be up on the screen anyway guys hope you like that review I do a lot of reviews like this and also a bunch of giveaways so check out the channel i think you'll like it and don't forget i'll have the uh, links in the description to this stuff here this was the fly more combo you can just buy it standard version and buy the extra stuff if you wanted to but i bought the fly more combo with all this stuff and the package and stuff so anyway guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video